Well, welcome back to Comstock's channel, accelerating the commercialization of decarbonization on the forefront of an AI discussion today. Corrado, the CEO, joining us. Welcome back, sir. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure. Yeah, and always a pleasure to get you on, especially on the bleeding edge of artificial intelligence, really getting involved in a multitude of uh, industries. And you guys have an investment in quantum, uh, quantum generative materials using AI for material development, which really plays into your field. Maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, quantum generative material and its place, uh, you know, recently within Comstock. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, about four years ago, our chief technology officer came across these developments where people were starting to actually simulate materials at the atomic level, you know, and, and to me, Kyle, <laughs> it sounded like science fiction. You know, I said, I don't understand, you know, what, what, what we're even doing here, but but then I did understand, right? People were able to start simulating materials and material characteristics, like at the atomic level. So like what's a material characteristic, like simulating heat densities or, or thermal conductivity or electrical conductivity. So you start thinking about battery chemistries or, or, or carbon intensities, you know, the ability to simulate them on the computer. It's funny, you know, when in the mining world, we talk about natural resources being in situ, right? That means, you know, they're in the ground, right? Now they, they've coined a new term, right? We've, we've figured this out in silica, right? In other words, we've simulated it on the computer and then you go to the lab and you synthesize the material. So, so when Kevin came to me, you know, his, his thesis was this, right? This is bleeding edge. There's very few people doing it. However, in five or six years, this technology will be the forefront of all material development. And if you're not doing it, you'll be a dinosaur, right? So, so we said, yeah, I mean, we're a material science-based company. We're, we're an innovation company. We, we need to at least understand what's happening here. And I, I think we made relatively modest investments over the course of four years and we're able to simulate these material characteristics now in seconds. You know, so the original, the original agreement with Genmat, which we were an investor, was you develop the technology, you, you develop the software. We really want to be your power user, right? We want to license the tech for battery chemistries. We want to license the tech for decarbonizing materials. We want to license the tech for mining and mineral discoveries. Right? It was very well aligned you know, with our businesses. And so they got to the point where, where, where this technology is productive, it's useful. Now, what you really need to do is get your scientists, your engineers using the tools to accelerate development. So, you know, what, what blows my mind is the lithium ion battery was developed in 1992, you know, 32 years ago. Uh, and it's still the standard for, you know, electric batteries and electrification. That's not good, right? What, what we're able to do now is simulate a million different lithium ion chemistries and then start to prioritize which one of those you would actually synthesize in the lab. So we think R&D time is going to go from decades and years to weeks and months. It's, it's just stunning. So the transaction that we announced was... You know, so, so their success begot more success. Genman actually put a satellite into orbit. Uh, that satellite was designed to do hyperspectral imaging, you know, of, of mineral districts, you know, of, of, of mining assets, and then using, you know, geophysical AI, you know, to predict mineral discovery. But by putting that satellite into orbit, uh, they got good at it, right? And they started to get customers asking them, you know, would you would you put some satellites into orbit for us? And and so they were diversifying, and we thought it was probably the right time to say, look, the technology's got to a certain level uh, that we we can use. Uh, we'd like to stop investing in Genmat and start using the technology internally. So the transaction expanded and broadened our license to use the technology. It also eliminated the cash burn and the cash investment that we were making in the company. You know, they're gonna move forward now in multiple areas and we're gonna integrate this into our innovation system, the result of which will be much lower cost, much faster, you know, R&D development. So we're, we're pretty psyched about 
uh, this change. We're pretty psyched about completing uh, the transaction and, and the broad use of this technology that we have. And now we'll start building our internal capabilities uh, more and more. Yeah, I think this is truly pivotal as we pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section and subscribe for future news catalysts like this as it hits the wire. Of course, we'll bring it to you here. But on that note, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Outstanding. Thank you.